I was once a camper myself. But it wasn't anything like this. Cheap creep. Oh yeah. Get some more weather finally. Even though it's, uh, you know, late May. Whatever. Summer starts late these days. I got the first step done on this pop-up camper project, which is getting a title for something that, uh, you know, doesn't really have a title. I had some questions about people, you know, asking about the process. On this 1988 Coleman Columbia, the VIN number I did finally find, and it was located, boom, right there on this little plate that holds the propane tanks pretty faded now the other issue was the guy that I got it from said he had a title that uh, he never registered and uh, so we just did a bill of sale I went to the Secretary of State the first time they told me that uh, him just signing a receipt was not enough to get a title it, it doesn't work that way so what they had me fill out is this form right here. It's like their last resort form, pretty much. It is, this is from Michigan, by the way. This is called an ownership certification form. And basically you were just um, filling it out and filling out the most information to the best of your ability. So I have other things that you can't even fill out some of these fields. So you just fill out what you can basically. And then you just, you know, you tell a good backstory how acquired here. And cause I, I got a boat for free that I literally just got out of, you know, somebody's junk. And that's pretty much all you say is you got it, what city you got it from and how you got it and all that. And you just do it to the best of your ability. If you have any numbers, they try to run the VIN numbers. Uh, they ran the VIN numbers on this camp up or pop up camper. And they found out that the person that I got it from did not get it from the original owner. So this is a double lost title transfer situation. Uh, which is super annoying. Luckily, it wasn't reported stolen. If it was, you probably couldn't do this. It was just kind of a super lost title situation. But once I got this filled out, they instantly gave me a plate and um, it's plated and it's registered and I now own this thing. So that was the fun process. So now comes to the restoration process very first thing this thing is so badly worn the paint is down to the aluminum as you can see so I am going to scrub the hell out of this I saw another youtuber use flex seal and that worked out pretty good I need to plug this hole uh, right there and uh, I just need to pop it up and see what the inside looks like I'm kind of scared because I've never opened this so uh, yeah come join me and uh, we can find out what it looks like all right, so uh, I'm gonna be cleaning this thing. I'm gonna use my favorite cleaning product, super clean. Um, all I'm doing is just mixing it with a little bit of water. For this kind of stuff, you can mix it 50 50 if you want. Um, I'm not gonna use that much. Got a little bit of water in here already, and I'm just gonna use a uh, brush here. got a nice stiff brush and we're going to scrub it down see what it looks like you can just see the uh, stuff come right off partly because the uh, power washer but Honestly, a lot of it because it's super clean. That stuff works really good. Well, there we go. Uh, the night and day difference. That super clean and power washing did a good job. So uh, I got it pretty clean. Uh, the top was more uh, dirt than paint, so we're going to paint it, of course. 
Um, it is kind of an off-white beige, which I do like because it'll kind of match my Tahoe. So, uh, yeah. I got a hole. I got a patch right there. So that's going to be fun. Figure that out. It's time for the, uh, the unveiling. Let's uh, see if this thing opens or not. So you open is that way. Something's been living in there, that's for damn sure. The roof is uh, pretty bad shape. Oh boy, that is a mess. I got some massive holes. Of course we got some wood rot. Um, is even grosser. Carpenter ants found this sucker. Man, do they find this sucker. Oh, hello. We got a dead chipmunk. Oh, yeah. This thing is ripe. All right, well, I guess the first thing to do is uh, get rid of the ants. This thing has more holes in it than Swiss cheese. Um, what are we gonna do with this? I mean, it is chewed up bad. I don't even know if this is fixable. I really got a bad feeling about this. I mean, ugh. Roof's got holes in it, holes there. That chipmunk like ate this entire thing. He had a very good diet all winter long of canvas, which is kind of gross. I mean, it's peeling up there. I, I just don't know. I got most of the ants out, so that's cool. Got this pulled up, got that pushed out a little bit. Yeah, I don't I've watched some YouTube videos on restoring these things, but man, I, I don't know. The roof is just gone on this thing, too. I don't know. We'll see here, guys. Okay, so uh, doing a little evaluating on the old pop-up camper here that we got. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, uh, it needs a lot of work. Let's take a look. So I opened it up, and you know, from the previous uh, clip, you saw the crazy chipmunk and he pretty much ate everything. Uh, the wood's still pretty solid as far as the bunks go, the slides work. Uh, it's missing a door and uh, everything folds up pretty good and it just rained and the, the roof isn't too bad. I just need to redo it, so, but uh, yeah. It's uh, it's a nightmare. It's gonna be a long process. You can order new tops. Um, I found somebody that uh, got back with me and they just wanted a VIN number to verify. And then you can see the hole on the good side. And then uh, this is the bad side. So, you know, whatever we got in there, chew the hell out of that seat or that bed. I'm just going to probably throw these out and just start over from scratch. I mean, they kind of suck anyway. They're thin. Use like a memory foam, but uh, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Fun, fun. So there's not much left to do to, for the, to fix this thing other than... Um, Try to patch it, which I did contact somebody, and um, I will mention he's a real nice guy. Uh, got back to me on my email right away. Um, he runs a website. Uh, it's canvasrepair.webs.com. And um, what's nice about him is the canvas on these older campers. Boom, up there. Um, yeah, they, um, it's a different, uh, pattern and the, the new canvas tops aren't made that way. And if you want it to look, you know, better than duct tape or, 
you know, these canvas kits they sell um, where they don't match at all. They're just like thin and they're not like that perforated, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, pattern. Um, he, uh, this, this John T. Canvas guy, he, uh, he found uh, the same material and he'll match it. And um, he sells them on eBay, but I would visit his website. Um, and he, he said he could sell it in just about any lake you really want. Um, and then you can, you know, sew it in and all that. Mine is so chewed up and ratty. Like, I just feel like I'm, since I'm doing a restoration, I'm just going to change the whole top. Uh, I, I don't want to mess with it. I mean, everything is just chewed up and beat up. It's kind of expensive. Um, the other company I found that I like, uh, that I'll probably be ordering a top through is, um, Bear Creek Canvas. Um, they're going to sell me a whole new top. They're asking for my VIN number. The only thing that really stinks is if you order a canvas top, don't plan on doing this in spring and having a camper for summer. It's probably going to be the end of the year, uh, or, you know, the end of the summer, at least until you get your, you know, custom canvas, uh, top in. So, um, I'm going to provide both those links, uh, in the description and yeah, definitely check them both out. They, uh, I'm working with both of them right now and, uh, they're both really nice and get back to you. So, all right, well, here we go on to the next one.